It's fall. Guess what? It's time for chili. This is gonna be a meaty style chili without any actual meat. But it's also gonna be whole food plant-based, which means there's no weird processed stuff unless you consider nutritional yeast to be weird processed stuff. And in that case, we probably can't be friends because nutritional yeast is awesome. We are gonna be using some olive oil though, which isn't necessarily whole food plant-based, but in this case, you don't have to. I'm using it because I actually like the flavor that olive oil adds to this. I mean, not even using a lot, just maybe a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half. By the way, this isn't an Instant Pot, and the Instant Pot is turned on to saute right now. So it's getting hot. It's been heating up for just a couple of minutes. Once your oil is hot, what's the next thing I wanna add? Sofrito, which in our instance is one carrot, one rib of celery, and one onion. Now, sofrito is the Italian version of uh, mise en place, or no, the, uh, the other thing. There's, I don't know, there's names for it. There's, every, every nation has its own name for it. It's basically the base of any soup, any sauce, Stew. any... Stew. Yeah. And I just basically want to cook that until I get things kind of translucent. Uh, there's one other thing that gets added to this right now. Bell pepper! How much bell pepper? One bell pepper. I'm using red. Could you use green? Of course. Sure. Red happens to have the most vitamin C, and I think it's the most flavorful, so that's why we're using that. Also, if you happen to have any on hand, a jalapeno would be really great to add at this time as it well. It really would. It would be awesome to add a jalapeno right about now. It would be really great to add a jalapeno. Why aren't we adding a jalapeno right now? Because we ran out of them and we can't go to the store because there's a hurricane. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of people will just throw everything into the Instant Pot and hit go. I like the saute method. I think that extra little bit of caramelization adds a lot to the flavors. Chili really is tomato soup. When you think about it, it's bean and tomato soup or stew. So you wanna get as much flavor into it as you possibly can and use your sofrito, use that stuff. When you hear it sizzling away, you see the steam coming out. I'm releasing some moisture as well as getting some browning. I actually want this to turn just a little bit, I mean, not brown, but just a touch of color. One advantage to using the Instant Pot for this is it's never going to get that hot. I think it only gets to about 250, 275 in there. So it's never really going to burn it so much, uh, especially with a little bit of oil. It's just, it's gonna be tough to burn. So that's fine. You can totally do this on the stovetop. It's just gonna take a lot longer and you probably wanna use canned beans, okay? We are using whole dried beans. Also, if you don't want to use the olive oil, if you're totally against that, we're totally cool with that but you want to add some additional moisture, probably yeah, the veggie, veggie broth, broth would be a great exception. Yeah, you there. can totally do this using veggie broth, yeah. uh, that, that kind of frying, no problem. You can probably hear the sizzling going down a little bit. That means there's less water in the pan. That's very, very important. Um, the auditory signals from cooking are largely misunderstood and hugely misrepresented. People don't use that. But already I can hear there's a lot less liquid in here than there was before. So now is the time I wanna add garlic. Huh? Four cloves, but in our case, of course, six. I used seven. <laughs> you used seven? <laughs> yeah, there's seven here. Um, I almost always put in at least double the amount of garlic that I called for in my own recipes. Um, partially to be funny and partially because, well, we like garlic. You know, we're garlicky people. And I want to stir that through. I don't want it to burn. That's why we add the garlic a little bit later so that it doesn't burn. Because if you put that in first, it's very likely to burn because it's when, chopped a little small. When garlic burns, it gets really bitter. So yeah, you it's don't a want nasty it to do that. Flavor. And so to aid cutting that heat, once you feel the garlic is ready, you're gonna add the veggie broth. We're doing two and a half cups of veggie broth. Which I have pre-measured. This is our From Scraps veggie broth. Just tastes really, really good. Comes out slightly different every time we make it, but it's just a really good thing. And you'll hear that sizzle go away, just like that. At this point, I would turn it to off. I'm just gonna cancel the whole thing. Now my Instant Pot is off because it doesn't need to be on anymore. Next. It's time for our dried ingredients. And for that, we're gonna be using our beans and our meat replicant. So basically for your beans, you can choose whatever dried beans you desire. For us today, we're doing kidney and black beans. Kidney beans, to me, are a must in chili. And I'm using, what, okay. a cup? My second bean, I like to use two different kinds of beans. You can just use one if you want, you just use two cups. We're using black beans today, only because... We didn't have any pintos. Yeah, normally I would do kidney beans and pinto beans, but black beans would be my second choice. Now, 
You can just add like textured vegetable protein, like a half cup or three quarters of a cup of that to this and make a, a meat like thing. But I've been playing around with lentils a lot lately. I'm really liking what they do. Plus they add a lot of fiber, they add more protein and they're a whole food and they're really, really cheap. So I'm just gonna use a half cup of lentils. That comes out to almost like a cup and a half to two cups when they're cooked up. So it's kind of like adding, you know, if you were using a ground meat product, it would be like adding three quarters of a pound of ground beef. So I'm just gonna dump that right in. That's where the broth comes in. That two and a half cups of broth equals out the amount of beans. That's important to know. Two cups, two and a half cups of beans, two and a half cups of broth. I know there's gonna be other liquids in there too, but that's okay. You wanna make sure you have enough liquid to cook those beans, all right? If you are soy friendly and you don't want to use TVP or you don't want to use lentils as your meat replicant, you can use tofu crumbles. We yep. have a video of that as well. And that looks really well in a oh, chili. Oh yeah, absolutely. We've done that a couple times too. Yeah. Okay, right. what's next? Next, we're going to put in our canned ingredients. So we're going to do a, um, the one can of 28 ounce crushed tomatoes. Now you can use whole if you prefer. I like using crushed tomatoes for this. It just makes it a little easier. I don't have to mix them up. I don't have to break them down myself. Next is a 14 and a half ounce of diced tomatoes. And that's just the standard size. We are using no salt added tomatoes, by the way. A lot of salt gets hidden in tomato products and we're not adding any salt to this. So this is actually a low salt type recipe. Another trick no we way. used by using the dried beans rather than the canned beans really cut down the sodium as well. Oh yeah. All right, it's time to spice things up. So we are gonna do two tablespoons of chili powder. This happens to be our own ground ancho chili powder. Um, they're from peppers that I think we grew them, dried them, and ground them up. You can use any chili powder you like, it's okay. Two tablespoons ground cumin. This one we didn't grow. One tablespoon dried basil. I think that's this one. One tablespoon dried oregano. I know that's this one. And one tablespoon dried thyme. Pretty sure this is thyme. Okay, so that must be the ground pepper. Ground black pepper. Okay. Half teaspoon. Half teaspoon, yeah. Okay, and I just wanna give this a mix around. It'll look thick, and it should, because I like my chili thick. Okay, what's next? At this point, you totally have a chili, and you can stop right here. But we're not going to, because we're extra. Kick it up a notch. <laughs> So we're gonna do one of our favorite ingredients to add, to make things a little more meatier, a little more unami. Umami. Umami. Unami, yeah. Yeah. Umami. I was like doing tsunami. Yeah. <laughs> we it's are got a hurricane, hurricane on the brain. It's okay. And that's liquid smoke. How much of that? We're doing one whole tablespoon of liquid smoke. Okay, you don't have to use quite that much if you don't want to, but this is going to cook under pressure tends to blow some of the flavors out. So I want to be a little bit careful. And then finally, the thing that has to be in everything that we cook just because we're crazy that way is nutritional yeast. I totally forgot to get the nutritional yeast. One second. We keep our nutritional yeast in a mason jar with an old Parmesan cheese lid. So you can just pour it or you have shaker top or just an open spout. See, it's kind of convenient and hey, gets use, use of those old lids. So how much do we need? Two tablespoons, please. Eh, two tablespoons, quarter cup. What's the difference, right? <laughs> that was more like a quarter cup. All right, next. The final thing is this. Spinach. How much? We called for two cups of fresh spinach. That's about two cups. Now, some of you might be going, why the heck are you putting spinach in chili? Well, my response to you is why the heck not? <laughs> Sp spinach is such a neutral flavored thing when it gets cooked in, particularly with all those strong I spices. I put kale in spinach, okay? <laughs> kale and chili. Yeah, I don't put kale in spinach, I put kale in chili. <laughs> Yeah, because that would be weird, right? So this is just a really easy way to bump up the nutritional value of your chili without creating any weird texture or flavor. It basically disappears. It, it, you yeah. won't really know it's there. Yeah. Once everything's in, you need the lid, please. Put on your lid, let it sing to you, and then I put it on pressure cook for 45 minutes. Now there's a reason. 45 minutes is a little bit longer than the beans actually need to cook, but it makes sure that every single bean is fully cooked and it cooks 
everything else too. You want it on pressure, but you see mine already timed out. Pressure cook, 45 minutes on high, start. Now, it'll take a few minutes to come up to pressure and then it'll go. If you do not have the very large version like we have, you may have to scale this down a little bit. You know, like maybe use half a cup or three quarters of a cup. We have a little tiny, uh, the three quart, and I overflowed it last time trying to make chili. Don't do that. Yeah, I had to dump it into this one. So this is gonna take 45 minutes to closer to an hour. And uh, we'll be back at that point to show you what it looks like. Okay, the Instant Pot just beeped at me, letting me know that it's done. It's hissing and making noises. So some people will like to let this sit for a while and naturally release. I'm not one of those people. I'm impatient. I want to eat this now. So I'm going to do the manual release it's actually gonna happen off camera unless I turn it. Eh, you're not gonna see it, but you'll hear it. Our cats love that. Anytime now. Just waiting for the thing to click. That, right there. So one of the joys of waiting for that to happen is that it releases these glorious aromas into your house. Oh, yeah. And so now everything smells like chili and that is never a bad thing. Let's see how it looks. Non più dry farfalon amoroso Notte giorno di torno girano Delle belle torbate You can tell by his steam on my glasses, it's hot. All right, so since it's done, and I just wanted, I always like to check the bottom. Did it burn? In this particular Instant Pot, it doesn't tend to burn to the bottom at all, and it, it didn't this time. So let's just ladle some into a bowl. And now I need to take some pictures for thumbnails. All the photos are done. It's time to taste. And I'm a gentleman, so I'm gonna let her taste first. Just remember it's going to be very hot. He also does this because he is notorious for just taking up a spoon and cramming it in his mouth, not even paying attention, even though he warned me that it's gonna be hot. Yeah, I know it's gonna be hot. I always do the blow and then the the taste that the touch with my tongue. And I know that sounds really perverse and awful, but <laughs> that is better than completely annihilating all the flesh in your mouth. So don't do that, okay? Be patient. It'll still be there, it'll still be awesome, and it'll still be there for you. Okay, now I know it's safe, and I won't kill myself. Mm. Now something you can do with this too is you, if you mix it up a little bit, some of the lentils will break up and they'll be more meat-like um, and do it in the pot, obviously. But um, yeah, that's something I actually forgot to do. There's a really nice uh, textural complexity to this chili. And I enjoy that because lots of times when you use canned beans, if you put them in too soon during the cooking process, they come to complete mush and yeah. it's just not as pleasurable as this, and if you want to pressure cook and just have it all be done, definitely use the dry beans because they'll have a little more resistance to them and they won't be complete mush. There's a nice brightness of flavor to this too. Um, there's a good acidity level from the tomatoes and yeah. from the other spices, but everything is nicely balanced. It's got yeah. wonderful flavor. Yeah. It's very hearty, very meaty, but there's also a lot of really good vegetables in here too. They're yeah. adding a lot of nutrition. Yeah. So this is actually really healthy as well as very hearty. Um, and there's probably enough here to serve like eight people, which means like me and three others. Now, because we didn't have any jalapeno and we didn't put any jalapeno in this, it could use perhaps for our particular taste, a little bump on the spicy side. French red hot. So, you can use a commercial red sauce, hot sauce if you wish, or you can make your own, which we have in the past, and it was really yummy. Yeah, we'll so, have to put a video up about that. So you can add a hot sauce. If it's too spicy and you want to tone it down some, you can add a... Vegan sour cream or yep. vegan yogurt. Yep. Works really well. Either of those work really well in this. Um, you you can, can also put like shredded diet cheese on top yep. or any brand cheese that you yep. like. 
that'll give you some of that ooey gooey stretchy thing going on which will be another textural element. Another thing that lots of people like to do is add crackers in it. Mm. I don't particularly like the cracker element because I feel like it's a little too bland, but I do appreciate the, cause the, the, the crackers are gonna absorb the moisture and then they're gonna break apart. And so it kind of is a similar creaminess to adding cheese or the sour cream. So. Bit, yeah. Um, it, it does have its place. Now, one thing I want to point out is we use the three different beans, and there's a reason for that. Each of them has a different texture. She was starting to touch on that. The onions, the peppers, they all just kind of fall apart, okay? They, they turn into no texture, basically, just part of the sauce. The tomatoes thickened up nicely, so this is, I mean, as you can see, this is thick. It's not like a soup. This is thick. This is how I like my chili. But those beans, that's where the texture comes in. Because kidney beans are a little bigger than black beans. Black beans are a lot bigger than lentils. So the lentils are technically overcooked, which means they're gonna break apart a little bit. The black beans are cooked pretty much properly, maybe a little over, so they're a little softer. And then the kidney beans still have a little bit of bite left to them. They're not undercooked, they're just cooked. That's something you can't do with canned beans. Even out of the can, they're already overcooked in my opinion. Yeah. So that's why this is just, this is, this is awesome. I, I, I think this is fantastic. Let's talk storage options. If you don't eat all of this in one sitting, you can put it in the fridge and it'll last for maybe a week if you let it go that long. You can also put it into small containers and freeze this. It works beautifully well. Let it sit out for a few hours. It'll defrost or microwave to defrost. Just make sure that you label it. We are notorious for mm. over making on purpose so that way we can have these little instant bites, if you will. Planned overs. In the freezer. But if we don't label them, it's just a random jar of orange brown stuff. Is that spaghetti sauce? Is that chili? What I is know what that? It is. So label them and date them if you can, and that'll make it a lot easier for you in the future. But I'm already married. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.